Kelly, he said all that really important stuff. No one calls me Alexandria. I try to be professional, so it does say that on the presentation and in the documentation, but everyone calls me Allie in the whole entire world. Um, so I am, uh, wanna first thank you again for being here. Um, and I'm just gonna go through a little bit about this FAFSA Challenge Completion, FAFSA Completion Challenge Grant um, that we are working on here in Philadelphia in partnership with another organization. Um, as many of you know who are uh, been looking at this type of work for a long time, FAFSA completion uh, continues to be a barrier for a lot of students, especially in urban environments, um, where there's some challenges about what we've heard is that there are some challenges in reference to how information is perceived once parents and families um, enter information onto a FAFSA. Um, the confusion about when it needs to be done, how it needs to be done, what types of information should I include. Some parents have even expressed uh, feeling suspicious about what the, uh, the folks at the FAFSA place are gonna do with their information uh, once they receive it. Um, but we also know and are very clear that the FAFSA is a requirement for any student who wants to, to, wants to attend an accredited college or university. So because it's a requirement, whatever barriers exist, we hope to try to inform the process a bit more and definitely increase the number of students who are prepared and who are completing their FAFSA. Um, so we are participating in, I'm going the wrong way, no. We are participating, how do I go next? Yep. There we are. You can hit the down arrow, we'll do it too. Awesome. That's what happens when you put a Mac user on the little PC. Um, so um, this work also sits in the Office of College and Career Readiness, which um, Fred uh, talked about. Um, there are some, I think one thing that's important to note about the Office of College and Career Readiness is that we sit in the Chief Academic Division, right? So a lot of our work, while College and Career Readiness is a wide, uh, consists of and is implicated by a wide range um, of practices that because we sit in an academic office, a lot of those things are focused on instruction, right? And how do we improve academic outcomes for students? Um, there are some things that we do in our office that are related more to access work, and this is one of those things. The access work that we do is not specific to individual uh, student level um, supports, but more wide ranging citywide endeavors that are more like, you know, campaign, campaigns and, and trying to co collaborate with other folks to get things done. There are about 250 partners in the city of Philadelphia who do college and career access work. Um, so we don't intend to step as much into that space because there are a lot of people already doing that. Um, so as Fred mentioned, our anchor goal one is to ensure that 100% of students graduate from graduate ready for college and career. So a piece of that is being able to complete the FAFSA. Um, so the FAFSA grant was actually um, awarded to the Philadelphia College Prep Roundtable by an organization called NCAN, which I'm sure many of you have heard of, the National College Access Network. Um, and as I talked about, the goal is to increase the number of students who are clear about what the expectation is, as well as clear about what they need to do to co successfully complete their FAFSA. So the Philadelphia College Prep Roundtable was awarded this grant and we have partnered with them uh, to help ensure that we can move the work forward. Uh, so a couple of things that um, the Philadelphia College Prep Roundtable did is that they recruited financial professionals from uh, universities all over the city, universities and uh, smaller community-based organizations that do college access work. So they recruited all of these folks who had a desire to be financial um, FAFSA coaches and provided extensive training and kind of like a certification so folks can be certified to be a FAFSA coach. One of the other things that we did was we worked with principals to understand what the need was in the school. Um, so we did surveys, we did some focus groups, and so principals were able to identify 
uh, as a school and in a school, what do we need in the school to support FAFSA completion? Do I need someone to come and perform FAFSA, like a FAFSA workshop for my staff, or do I actually need someone to come in and work with parents and families to do that? Um, so there are a couple layers and levels of coaching, um, but Philadelphia College Prep Roundtable did coordinate uh, intense training and we are beginning the stages of deploying those folks into schools based on school need not based on what we think should happen but definitely based on school need um, so the launch happened October 7th uh, the launch rolls out actually in phases um, there are 18 schools that have identified a strong need for this for a level of support that includes uh, the coaching as well as some training that will happen at the school level for not just counselors but teachers and other school-based staff so that they can support having FAFSA completion meetings at their school. Right? We know that parents and families are more apt to come to places where they are comfortable um, when they need to learn a new skill or something new needs to be learned. Um, and then we will continue to support the launch of FAFSA coaches to other schools and as extensive as schools need them to be, right? So some schools would prefer for one coach to come out two times, where some schools are like, look, I need a coach here every week for six weeks until all of my students complete their FAFSA, right? So it varies a lot. Um, do, 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 do. So um, in regards to Navian, some of you may know that um, Navian is the, uh, the system that we use uh, to support um, college going with all of our students. So they're, they do career assessments, they do their, it's connected to their senior exit survey, like it's this whole um, system. And we uh, had a desire to make sure that there was a connection between what we were asking students to do in FAFSA um, and Naviance. Um, so that we could track the information and we could ensure that that information was provided to the Department of Education. There are some disparities around, I, did, I'm not, I don't have any data slides because you'll be really excited about that. Maybe not because you guys like data. <laughs> um, but there are some disparities about the data that we've received. Like we understood, we learned in this process that uh, FIA, who is the state organization that manages the financial aid process, um, had had entered a filter onto how they were reading data that eliminated any student who had turned 18 by October, right? So we know that students do may not go to school right after they graduate. There are students who are uh, may take a half a semester off or may not go until that following year. And there are also students who've turned 18 before March or you know, some of our students um, are in that age range. So we realized that there were some students that we just weren't seeing because of this filter that FIA had added and then we're able to go back to them and have some conversations about um, what the data needs to look like in order to accurately inform who needs support and what type of support they need. That data, actually the completion data, um, is connected or is imported into Naviance every two weeks so that then counselors can go in and see which students have completed and which processes they've done. Um, so we have a few, a few outreach initiatives. Um, we have some district-wide events. There'll be FAFSA completion workshops at the local college fairs that will be happening here. Um, there are a couple that are here. Both of those are listed. Um, and then also the National College Fair um, in a few weeks at the Convention Center. Um, we've also partnered with an organization called Get Schooled. Um, Get Schooled is an organization who does a lot of work around increasing attendance in schools. So we partner with Get Schooled in a couple ways. Uh, we do an attendance initiative at uh, the Comprehensive High Schools, which encourages students to complete tasks on a um, like a, on an online platform, and we compete with 90 schools around the country, and the student that wins gets a celebrity uh, principal for a day. Um, and so they also agree to partner with us on this FAFSA initiative uh, to support more in means of a uh, um, campaign support and getting the word out and that kind of thing. Um, they have this text messaging service, which um, 
is, I don't know the word, I don't know what I want to call it. It's kind of interactive. So a student, you know, they can a text me a student will receive a text message that says, have you completed your FAFSA, yes or no? If they say yes, they'll get one response. If they say no, they would get a different response. Um, and so they're building out the capabilities of that, um, that text messaging support and that platform, so we're excited about that. And Philadelphia College R R Roundtable wants to host a phone-a-thon. Um, we've never done that before, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, and so here are the goals of the challenge, um, to increase at least by 5% in the year 2017. Uh, the baseline uh, to establish was 53%, the baseline that was established was 53%, and it was actually from the 2015 data, because the 2016 data was not available when uh, Philadelphia College Prep Roundtable applied for the, the project. Um, so the baseline was established in 2015, it was 53%. Um, so there is actually a goal of 5% each year, so we're hoping to get to 58%. Um, after this cycle, and that's it. Bam, all done, I did it.